There is a great move of God taking place in America right now through God's prophet, Prophet Passion Java. This man is so crazy in the prophetic. He moves accurately. The intensity of God's anointing on him is so heavy. Era mirin di planta la uta holy station bright. Jumenda shuru bain leader tenit. Holy station quarter right center. Goodbye for radia siga leiga. Ricongre kinda valiki a konga siga de. Geography gazuba nanga peredi nanga peredi a kong. Kamina koboyata. Kamina koboyata. Kamina koboyata. Kamina koboyata. Accurately, the intensity of God's anointing on him is so heavy. When he speaks in tongues, they are so electrifying. Whenever he prays for people, people begin to speak in new tongues. You can actually receive and begin to speak in other tongues. Don't stop. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. Yeah! Power! Plebra kungra hate. Mika, mika eke. Miko de masimba. Bandumbe bajumbe bamba baba yagala. We are seeing people speaking in angelic tongues, unknown tongues. People seeing things they've never seen before in the Spirit. People being unlocked in spiritual dimensions. People whose gifts were locked are suddenly being unlocked. People who never knew their spiritual names now know their spiritual names. The anointing is so intense. Watch as he prays for people. Look at that. As he moves his hands, the anointing begins to move. People begin to shake. Electric, it's so tangible. You, you can't miss it. He's moving with the power of the Holy Spirit all over. Divine station, distortion mind, Nikoke, Minai and Dina, Brony Dai Center B to area, Denied and Google Dina, So Mat, Peka Death, Peck, Sick, Legal Mat, Conviction Power, Influence Power, Tons of Fire in your spirit. Yes. He's moving with the power of the Holy Spirit all over Maryland, Virginia, New York City, California and different parts of America Even different parts of the world India is experiencing this South Africa is experiencing this Brazil is experiencing this Bahamas, Jamaica, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Madagascar Is receiving this power Yes. Yes. Dosh and bites. Clean, gluten, paliga, hide and You can't fake power. Ye shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost shall come upon you, you shall be my witnesses in California, Atlanta, New York City, Texas, everywhere around America. Catch the fire. Catch the fire. 
there's an angel moving here. taking place in America right now through God's prophet prophet passion Java this man is so crazy in the prophetic he moves accurately the intensity of God's anointing on him is so heavy Jumenda Shuru Bain Lead Attenity. Holy Tration Quarter Right Center. Goodbye for Radia Siga Liga. Rikongre Kinda Badikia Konga Siga De. Geography Gazubananga Peredi Nanga Peledia Ko. Kamina Koboyata. Kamina Koboyata. Kamina Koboyata. Kamina Koboyata. Kamina Koboyata. He moves accurately. The intensity of God's anointing on him is so heavy. When he speaks in tongues, they are so electrifying. Whenever he prays for people, people begin to speak in new tongues. You can actually receive and begin to speak in other tongues. Don't stop. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. Yeah! Power! Plebra kungra hate. Mika, mika eke. Miko be masimba. Bandumbe ba chumbe bamba baba yakaza. We are seeing people speaking in angelic tongues, unknown tongues. People seeing things they've never seen before in the Spirit. People being unlocked in spiritual dimensions. People whose gifts were locked are suddenly being unlocked. People who never knew their spiritual names now know their spiritual names. The anointing is so intense. Watch as he prays for people. Look at that. As he moves his hands, the anointing begins to move. People begin to shake. Electric, it's so tangible. You, you can't miss it. He's moving with the power of the Holy Spirit all over. Divine station, distortion mind, Nikogen, Minai and Dina, Brony Dai Center B to area, Dinai and Google Dina, So Ma Pekate, Pek Sik, Ligoma, Conviction Power, Influence Power, Hands of Fire in your spirit. Yes. Lega Prat, the Libro, the Liga Paracomba Santo. He's 
moving with the power of the Holy Spirit all over Maryland, Virginia, New York City, California, and different parts of America, even different parts of the world. India is experiencing this. South Africa is experiencing this. Brazil is experiencing this. Bahamas, Jamaica, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Madagascar is receiving this power. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Dosh and bites. Clean, gluten, paliga, hide and keep. Hey, Paradas.
that we serve. I'm so glad that when we call the name of God, everything works out. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. You are such a great God. You are such a great God. Just come on, let's declare his greatness in this place. Just tell him how great he is to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, you are great. Father, you've done what I could not do for myself. Father, you've conquered, helped me to conquer giants. Father, you've defeated foes. Father, you are great. You are great. You are great. We know that our Father created man from the dust of the earth. He created you and I from the dust of the earth. But then he went a step further and he breathed the breath of life into each and every one of us. We all were nothing until he breathed the breath of life into us. And because he has breathed into us, we are standing here today. We are standing here today more than conquerors. We are standing here today with a mind to seek after him. It's his breath that he put inside of us. So who are we not to use that same breath and pour out our praise unto him? Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. Let's use that breath that God gave us. And let's just begin to exalt him. Let's begin to exalt him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's your breath in our lungs, Lord. 
So we pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, Lord. So we pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, Lord. So we pour out our praise. We give it back to you, Jesus. We give it back to you, Jesus. You the glory, Jesus. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath in your lungs, so we pour out. Pour out our praise. Somebody say it's your breath. It's your breath in our lungs. In our lungs. So we pour. So we pour. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Come on, just sing unto the Lord. Just tell him, say, Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. In life, you are love. You bring light to
Lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to be sensitive in this time. This is a house of miracles. We experience, we have seen. I've been in this ministry for almost five years. It's not a little time. But I've seen miracles happening in this house. It doesn't have to be the preacher, the prophet to come. While people are praising God, there are signs, miracles, wonders happening right now. Even right now. You may not be aware. I want you to open and you open your senses and experience the angelic in this house. I want you to surrender. Put your guard down. Be free. If you cannot enjoy in the presence of God, there's something wrong. This should be the place that you will find comfortable. There's no stress because you are in the presence of the one who has all the power, all the power Hallelujah. in heaven, all the power on earth, all the power under the earth. He holds everything. And his name is Jesus. You have not come to prophet passion. He's only a grace carrier of Jesus. You and me are grace carriers. Because he is the one who's living inside of us. Your, your amen, your shout is... I want you to know the power that you have inside of you. The Bible says you have been created in the likeness, in the image. I'm talking about you and me. You do not know what you carry inside. Have you ever wondered why the devil is so angry and jealous? Because he was never created in the image of God. If you're not here, I think I should go back. I want you to catch this revelation. You and me are not ordinary people. We, we teach kids in school about the Big Bang. Hello? It is not the bang of anything. It was his voice that created and he's still creating galaxies around the universe. It is still being created right now. Billions of years later, it's creating galaxies around. Stars are being born. And you and me are created in that image. The one who created everything by his word and we his word not him his word has the power to create imagine the image of the essence of him that lives inside of you his name is Yeshua Mashiach who is inside Christ living inside of me and you think you are a weak vessel Somebody has fooled you. When you come into his presence, it should open your senses to who you are. There's only one people group of faith community can pray. Lord, thank you for making me like you. And I want to be like you in the essence of when Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration, his likeness, likelihood changed and he created, the, 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 the disciples could see, this is the man we were following. That his clothes started to lighten up. 
You are not a lesser vessel. You are created in the same image of Jesus. Same image of Yehovah God. Do not look down on yourself. That is not humility. That is pride. You're not giving him the glory. You're saying he made a mistake in creating you. Every time you wash your face on your mirror and say, Ah, oh, I don't like the way my nose is, my hair is, my skin color, how my, the gap in between my teeth. You have been fearfully and wonderfully created in this image. I want you to be aware where you're standing. There are angels who cannot catch himself. That's why they have six wings. Even they try to fall because the presence of God is so awesome. And that presence is here. Only if you could understand, only if your eyes are open and see who you are worshipping tonight. I want every eyes closed. Great are you, O Lord. That you give us a privilege to come every week in this house. This is a portal. You're standing on holy grounds. You're coming. Even your earthly bodies are here. If you are in the spirit, your spirit is in the presence of the almighty God before him in the heavens. Only a physical body is here. That's what the Bible says. He is looking for people who would worship him in spirit and in truth. If you truly worship him in the spirit, your spirit is, will be in the presence of God. Everybody, come on, lift up your voice and talk to Jesus right now. I believe there are miracles, signs and wonders happening because of the grace in this house. The altar of God. There is fire on this altar. There are angels uh, with your package, with your miracle, with your deliverance. Right now, connect. All you have to do uh, is to connect with the grace that is in this presence. Your blessing, your deliverance is connected to this house. Do not take this moment lightly. I'm not here to please anybody. I'm here to tell the truth uh, that you are created uh, in the image of God. Uh, you are in the presence of the Almighty because we are not just a gathering of somebody. We are the gathering of saints. We are the gathering of saints. That's what the Bible says. We are the gathering of saints. We are the gathering of saints. Even the angels are looking down from heaven to see what is going on. This is a gathering of saints. Lift up your voice. Lord, I connect. Lord, I connect with the revelation. I connect with the grace. Everything is possible. All things are possible for those who believe. All things. All things are possible for those who believe. All things. Come on, reach out and faith. And connect with this altar. Connect with this grace tonight. Your life will never be the same. If you're watching me online, if you're watching me online, this grace is available for you. Distance is not a barrier. Please connect. I plead that the presence of God, able to change your destiny, able to change your life forever. Come on, talk to Jesus. Let praise arise. Lift up, shout up, praise. Exalt him in this place. Connect with this grace. Connect. I plead. I beg of you. Do not take this moment lightly. We worship you, Jesus. We lift your name on high. The Bible says, again in Romans 10, 13. Can I have the scripture? For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Can I have the scripture on the line, please? Bible says in Romans 10, 13. 
for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved the Greek word for save it means sozo it means salvation it means healing it means deliverance it means wholeness what are you seeking God for for financial breakthrough it is available it's so so it's so so it's not just physical healing uh, spiritual healing uh, physical healing everything is involved uh, it's a total package who wants the salvation grace who wants the touch from heaven tonight are you able to connect come on your breakthrough is in this house your breakthrough is in this house if you believe connect with this grace it is not rocket science simple faith Jesus turns to the leper and said who had who came back to say thank you Jesus for saving me thank you Jesus for cleansing me he said your faith has healed you your faith has healed you I want you to stretch out your faith and connect with the graces that are upon you somebody's life is going to be catapulted to another dimension somebody's physical their marriages are being restored right now as we are worshipping one of the ways that we can worship is to give an offering of thanksgiving as a physical substance you can bring unto the Lord and say Lord I thank you for the healing already because Jesus died 2000 years and said it's already done your breakthrough has already happened in the realms of the spirit it is waiting yet to be manifested tonight is the day I pray it will manifest for you in the water of desire what a form you are desiring tonight it is already done but are you ready to connect and collect are you ready to connect and collect I want to raise up an altar offering of your favorite number something that connects with you take the number a double it a double offering if one is your favorite number make it 11 if two 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 22 if it's three 33 whatever might be a, your favorite number that you connect with and say Lord I know it's already done I'm connecting with the grace of this house for the manifestation, for the physical manifestation of the breakthrough, of the promise, of the prophecy that you already released for me and my family. I want everyone to lift up your offering, which of your favorite number. If you give him by cash, the baskets are available in the front of the altar. If you give him by cash app, it's dollar sign, Kingdom Embassy Inc. If you're giving by check, please make it to Kingdom Embassy Church. Kingdom Embassy Church, if you're giving by check, if you're giving by PayPal, the details are on the screen. Or if you're giving by Zen, that is available. 301 503 7144. I don't want to, you to miss out this moment. Giving is a form of worship. You're not just words, but you are doing it in action and in faith. I'm connecting to collect my breakthrough. If you're ready, can you lift up your offering in your hands, please? I want everyone to connect. Whatever God, for everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved, will be made whole, will be delivered, will be healed, will enjoy financial breakthrough, will enjoy prosperity, will enjoy the wholeness that God has promised. His word is true. Lift up your offering and say, thank you, Jesus. I connect with the grace. I do not take this grace for lightly. There are many out in the world who want to be here, unable to be physically in this presence. But you, God, heaven has granted you access to this holy place, holy ground, a sanctuary of the presence of God. Just take your offering and say, Lord, I connect with this grace. Tonight is my night of breakthrough, my healing deliverance of my family my restoration of my marriage whatever I'm believing for I know it's going to happen because it is possible the grace is already granted I take I connect with tonight with this revelation 
that I am created in the image of God. And you want me to enjoy wholeness in my body, wholeness in my soul, wholeness in my spirit, wholeness in every area of my life. You want me to be free. You want me to prosper. You want me to prosper in every area of my life. And that is your will for me, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, I give unto you, Lord, my double offering. My favorite number, I double it because I love you too much. I love you too much. I love you, Jesus. I will live for you for all of my life. I'm grateful to you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please make your way to the friend. Connect with this grace. Connect with this altar. As our worship team will help us with the song. Water you turn into wine You open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like Let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. I wonder why David said he was glad that let us go. In, when you said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. He wasn't glad that somebody said, let us go to the liquor store. Huh? He wasn't glad when somebody said, let us go to a, a friend's house. He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. Why? Because David knew everything that he ever needed was in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Kingdom Embassy, clap your hands for yourself tonight because you are right where you need to be. At the right time, at the right place, engaged in the right activity. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Kingdom Embassy Prophetic Thursday service. We welcome each and every one of you. Amen. Amen. I want to welcome all of our online viewers. Please do us a favor. Please like this video, share, and also tell us where you are watching us from. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge any first-time visitors. So if you're visiting Kingdom Embassy, Maryland, for the very first time, wave at me, wave at me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Welcome, 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 welcome to Kingdom Embassy, Maryland. I know that the Lord is going to speak a word to each and every one of you tonight. You are not here by accident. God is going to speak something in your life that will absolutely lift you. It will shift you, and it will catapult you to your next and higher dimension in God. Amen? Amen. Everybody put your hands together for our new visitors one more time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Here at Kingdom Embassy, we are children of honor. And what we do here, we honor the visionaries of this house. So we stand to our feet, hallelujah, and we put our hands together for our Father in the Lord, Prophet Passion Java, and our Mother in the Lord, Prophetess Lily Java. We definitely are a people of honor, and we honor our spiritual parents here 
Papa, Mama, we love you. We thank you for your sacrifice, your dedication, and your yes to God. Amen. Amen. You all may take your seats. I won't be before you long. The vision here at Kingdom Embassy is that we are a people of prayer, and we are preparing the world for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And being a people of prayer, every Tuesday night, we have our Kingdom Embassy prayer line. Amen? We want you to tap into the power of prayer every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. You can get the information on the screen behind me, or you can also contact 301-503-7144 for more information. Ahava women. Ahava women. This Saturday, March 23rd, our mother in the Lord, Prophetess Lily Java, will be bringing the fire, the healing, the deliverance, the whatever you need, the restoration will be here this Saturday, March the 23rd at 5 p.m. Please come. It will be a spiritual buffet. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of us ladies need that spiritual buffet? Amen. We all know the concept of a, of a buffet, right? You, you take what you need. Take, take what you want. Amen. So make sure that you come here Saturday hungry for something, expecting something, looking for something. Amen. And I know that that hunger and thirst shall be filled in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you have not yet, please RSVP at ahavawomen.com. Please let your friend know, your aunt, your sister, your grandmother, your mother, whoever, any lady that is in your circle, please let them know that we will be here at Kingdom Embassy, Maryland, Saturday, March the 23rd for Ahava Women. Maryland Easter Conference with Prophet Passion Java and Prophetess Lily Java will be March 29th through the 31st. You can RSVP for your seats nightly, and that is 7 p.m. nightly. You can RSVP, or you can get VIP seats. If you say, hey, I don't want to wait in the long lines, you can go and register for your VIP seating. There will also be a two-day prophetic school at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., March the 29th and March the 30th. If you are interested in growing in the prophetic, learning more about the prophetic, please register on prophetpassion.com under schools to be a part of the prophetic school. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Get excited. There's definitely prophetic schools. There's definitely something to get excited about. Amen. Our Father in the Lord has a couple of groups that you all can join. He has a premium mentorship telegram group where you will get direct lessons and live sessions from the prophet himself. Our mother in the Lord, Prophetess Lily Java, also has her daughter's group, and we are now on Telegram. So if you are interested in joining the daughter's group, Telegram, please see someone in the foyer immediately after service to scan the QR code to get connected today. If you have not yet, please visit our bookstore. We have 25 signs to know that you're a prophet, Prophetic Chronicles, Good Evening Holy Spirit, The Power of Love, and so much more. We also have 21 Days of Confession, 31 Prayers for Your Husband, and Battle of the Mind, Part 1 with Battle of the Mind, come, Battle of the Mind 2 coming very, very soon. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. We also have t-shirts. We have jumpsuits. Ahava women, we are here on Saturday, so we have some beautiful Ahava women jumpsuits in our bookstore. If you have not checked them out, please check them out before you leave today. We have books, wristbands, anointing oils, mantles, you name it. We have it in the bookstore, so please stop by the bookstore on your way out today. Please like, share, follow us on social media. We are on Facebook, we are on Instagram, we are on YouTube, and we are on TikTok. If you want to know what the prophet is up to, follow Prophet Passion on all of his social media handles. If you want to know what the prophetess is up to, follow Lily Java or Prophetess Lily Java on all of her social media handles as well as Kingdom Embassy. Amen. Amen. All of my Hava women, are y'all excited about this weekend? 
I am so very excited to see each and every one of you here. I know it is going to be a treat for each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. At this time, you all may stand to your feet as we welcome the worship team back onto the stage. As we prepare our hearts and our minds for the man of God to come to give us exactly what it is that we came here looking for. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So at this time, if you just lift your hands, hallelujah, and we're going to go into a quick prayer. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we thank you now. We thank you for what you are getting ready to do in this place today, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that the hearts and the minds are here on one accord, ready to engage with you, oh God, ready to receive what you have for us tonight, Father. Many of us have come in here with questions, God, that we need answers to, that we need answers for direction, oh God. But we thank you, God, that you are the God of the direction. You are the God of the answers, oh God. And we thank you tonight that you will answer us by fire, God. We thank you, oh God, that in this moment, Lord, as we lift up our voices, as we, be, as we come into one accord with you and your spirit in this moment, Father, we thank you that you are answering us even now. We thank you, Lord, that even as we leave this building, that we will walk into answers, oh God. The answers will meet us at the door, God. The answers will meet us at our car and meet us at our homes, Father. So, Father, we thank Thank you now. We say that we submit to you. We humble ourselves to you. We say have your way in us, through us, and around us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 Jesus. Give God a shout of praise in this place.
to do. You think that demons can stay in a place where the Holy Spirit resides? So don't just say it, feel it. Because the chain breakers in the room, the devil can't be saved. The devil can't be on my family. This is an eviction going to the end. The chain breakers. Devil 
can't have me or my family. This is an eviction notice to the enemy. The chain breakers in the room. And ain't no telling what he's gonna do. Feel the anointing in this house. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Can I get the microphone to work excellent so that I can hear myself? Apostle, if you can help me as well. Yeah, I feel the energy in the house. Bless you, bless you. I know that God is about to do something.
I don't know if I should prophesy now or prophesy after or what. But the energy in this room is too much. <laughs> prophesy! Somebody's hungry for the prophetic. Prophesy! I pray I prophesy. Prophesy! Next week by this time you shall have a testimony. Prophesy! In the name of Jesus. There is an abundance of blessings that God has for you. Woo! Prophesy! Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I know that God is about to do something in this house. And one thing I realize is that it's the people that value time that will shout like you're shouting. Now let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that your presence will remain in this house forever. Any person that steps in this room, whether someone prays for them or not, they shall be delivered. They shall be healed. Even after 200 years, oh God, any person that steps on this property, may they just feel the anointing. May there be a fire that stays upon this land. Oh yes, God, I pray. Any person that's desiring a word from God tonight, Father, I pray you speak directly to them. Use me as a vessel, but I pray you open their ears to hear and their eyes to see. In the mighty name of Jesus, speak through me tonight, oh God, and I pray your blessings will be upon your people. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Da -da 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 -da. This is uh, this is uh, this is my house because whatever belongs to my father belongs to me. Whatever belongs to my mother belongs to me. And whatever is mine is theirs. Yes. But there's nothing that I have that's mine. So I give God the glory and I give honor where honor is due to our spiritual parents, Prophet Passion Java and Prophetess Lily Java. Somebody shout hallelujah. Good to see you. Uh, as you take your seat, I want you to look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, this is the highest you have ever seen me, but the lowest I have ever been. Uh, I feel that God is going to do something big, and I got to keep my cool. To see. Uh, the best band in the world. God bless you. And those of you that are watching online, God bless you. Welcome to the stream. If you're watching on any platform, I want you to quickly share the broadcast. Let somebody know the apostle is teaching and he might just preach and prophesy. Uh, but I, I'm so honored to be here today because I know that God is up to something big. And I was just doing some research, and I was trying to kind of put together what God is doing, you know. Sometimes when you want to know what God is doing, you have to look in the past. Uh, if your father was a pastor, and your grandfather was a pastor, and your great-great-grandfather was a pastor, the chances of you being a pastor is pretty high. Right, and if you want to see where God is taking you in your life, I just want you to think about the past a little bit as far as what God is doing, not as far as what the devil's been doing. Uh, okay, because the, whatever the devil's trying to do in your past, it just determines how far you might go in the next couple of months. Um, God bless you. You see that there is something that the devil does. He has a strategy that doesn't work. 
he tries to expose things and reveal things before their time. Remember when Jesus was teaching and he was doing something, someone came up to him and says, be quiet, it's not yet the time. He rebuked the unclean spirit for revealing something before its time. That's how the devil works in your life. If somebody comes up to you and attacks you in a specific area of your life, why are you single? And they begin to talk about, you've been single your whole life, you'll never get married. They'll begin to expose something that God is about to bless you with. So if people are attacking you that you're single, you're single, you're single, just know that you're about to get married. Yeah. Hallelujah. Someone keeps calling you ugly, just know that your beauty's around the corner. Yeah. You know what I mean? There was a guy that went on my Facebook, YouTube live stream and began commenting some evil stuff. And he was making fun of me and making fun of me and I just stayed quiet. And he said one thing, he said, if I give you $20,000, is God going to bless me? And he discouraged me, he just disturbed my spirit. You know how some people, they try. And this guy was successful. <laughs> said, I give you 20000 now, is God going to bless me? And he said, ha, 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 laughing. I went to bed, I was kind of upset. And I said, mm, God bless him. Do you know what happened next week? <laughs> the next week, this young boy, 19 years old, comes up to me and says, God told me to give you $20,000. Why was I upset? <laughs> so never be upset whenever someone discourages you. Just know the enemy is trying to reveal a blessing before his time. Yeah, don't ever discourage, don't ever be discouraged for whatever the devil's trying to do in your life. He is also trying to expose things. He's called the angel of light for a reason. The angel of what? It didn't say the angel of darkness. The angel of what? So he's going to shine light somewhere and he's going to shine light on your blessings that are coming. Yeah, that's true. So don't ever, you know, get upset. It's just God. Hallelujah. 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 And I was just thinking back as to what God was doing in Kingdom Embassy. I was just looking back one week. I said, God, what are you doing in Kingdom Embassy? And you can begin to track what God is doing. He begins to speak to the Apostle Innocent. How many of you love Apostle Innocent Java? <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, he began to give a prophetic word and a message to Apostle Innocent Java to give all of us a message here. And he preached a message called, I am coming out. That message was so powerful. If you didn't hear it, go back and watch it. And that message, it was a message that God was portraying to the people that it's a season and a time to come out of certain situations. So it was a come out message. You're going to come out of your situation, your darkness. You're going to come out of these depression. You're going to come out of your debt. You're going to come out of these suicidal issues. You're going to come out of these problems in your life. That means that now God is about to take you from this line to the next line. Right? So you check the history of what's been preached. And I'm coming out was the message. Powerful. The next message you see is Prophetess Lily Java, our spiritual mother. Uh, she preached a message on identity and that message she was talking about how Nehemiah was a man and I want to just stay in this Nehemiah a little bit because I was actually on the plane flying to America from Africa on that Sunday morning and I read the entire book twice over. The moment I landed, I came to Maryland, mama opens the Bible and says, Nehemiah. And I said, oh Lord, this, the devil's in trouble. If God has been speaking to you before the preacher has spoken, that means you're on the right track. Amen. So you see that um, she began to preach on Nehemiah, the, the identity aspect or perspective of Nehemiah. If you read Nehemiah, you can get so many different perspectives in a single book. Somebody can see the idea of serving was so valuable in this man. What gave this man an ability to receive access to go to another town and take anything he needed for free to rebuild a wall was a letter. And that letter was given to him how? 
because he was serving and it touched my heart because when she said those things it took me back to 2018 when I said yes to serving in this house I began to serve in this house and in your serving walls will be rebuilt the, the, the rubble, the rubbish, the, the trash on the wall that's been sitting there for a long time begins to be cleaned up when you serve. God begins to take care of your needs in different areas when you say yes to serving. Am I making sense? So I believe that God is going to do something massive in your life, especially all of you that are serving in this house. So they were rebuilding this wall. This man was giving a letter to say, yes, go to that town. Uh, go back to the place where your father was buried and just rebuild that wall. The president or that king gave him a yes. Now, Nehemiah was a cupbearer, right? I was teaching just the other day on the cupbearer anointing or the Nehemiah anointing. Do you know what the Nehemiah anointing is? The Nehemiah anointing is the anointing of speed. So when the prophetess began to teach on Nehemiah, that means speed was being released. That, that wall wasn't being touched for years. It wasn't just destroyed. It was being destroyed years ago. But what took over 50 years for people to rebuild and were unsuccessful took Nehemiah 52 days to rebuild. So when you have the Nehemiah anointing, you have the anointing to do things with speed. So may God give you that anointing in the name of Jesus. Yeah, it's very important. If you're a teenager, if you're 20, you need that anointing because uh, uh, I desired that anointing on not knowing. That I needed that anointing. Do you know what made me calculate these things? I wanted to be like Pastor Benny Hinn. I wanted to heal the sick. I wanted to heal the sick so bad. I watched all of his movements of how God was using him. Reinhard Bonnke, great movement. People are getting healed. That was my heart. And I realized God is using such great men of God. But for me to get there, it looks like they're all in the same age group. There's no one doing it in, that age, in my age group. So I need the anointing of speed right about now. Because I don't want to be old healing the sick. I want to be this age healing the sick. Yeah. I don't know if I'm making sense. So Nehemiah was given the grace to rebuild a wall. Now how many of you have ever been there in your life where things were destroyed? A relationship was destroyed. A, another relationship was destroyed. And another relationship was destroyed. And it's not just boyfriend, girlfriend, husband type thing, but it's relationships in your own brothers and sisters. It's relationships with your father and your mother. It's a relationship with, in any area, you could have been born in a family that the walls were already destroyed. You know, and I pray that God would restore your walls in the name of Jesus. When you're born in a family where walls are destroyed, that means that you were born into a family where the father wasn't even there. It's just not fair. You were born, no father. He's gone. It's not fair. Uh, but I believe that God is able to restore a people that are grown up and growing up fatherless in the name of Jesus. Amen. Nehemiah was given a burden, and that burden that he woke up with caused him to be... Uh, the Bible says he sat down when he received the news that the walls were destroyed. Um, I was just telling the people in Atlanta this, my church there. I was saying that, you know, you wouldn't care if walls were broken in your own town. You wouldn't care. Anybody here, for the most part. Uh, it's, it's something that Nehemiah took to his heart. He had a burden. And I want to talk about that for a minute if I can. It was a burden that he carried. He, he sat down when he heard the walls were broken. He wept. Do you know that our nation elected a president because of a promise to build a wall? Did you know that? I'm not going to name these presidents now, but 
I'm just saying the, the, I'm not saying I'm for one or the other, either one. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying people voted for a man that made a promise to build a wall. That tells you how valuable building and rebuilding a wall is. It, it, it speaks of protecting your nation or protecting what you own. It speaks of covering up that which the enemy can see what you own. Uh, this man had a father that was buried in his town, in this town where the walls were destroyed, Jerusalem. And they, 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 the walls were down now. He, was, he realized people are able to come in and steal whatever they want to take. If there's no wall, it's free range. I'm speaking to somebody. If you don't have walls in your life, barriers in your life, anybody will come in and take whatever they want from you. Close the doors. Close the doors. Somebody say, close the, close the doors. Close the legs. You can't uh, keep everything open for everybody because they're just going to come in and steal what they want to take. Go to the front door, flip the sign, and say, we're closed. Sorry. No one's allowed in. Do you know it takes six months for one Rolls Royce to be built? And in those six months, do you know how many Toyotas can be built? Huh. In six months, Toyotas can build over 600. Over 600. So that which is easy to get loses its value because the Toyota is cheap. No offense. You have a Toyota. Nothing wrong with it. You get the point. It's over half a million dollars to get a Rolls Royce. Why? Because it took time to make that Rolls Royce. Yeah. The value of the wall was expensive in the eyes of the king because he knew that it took so much time for that thing to be rebuilt. So the king said, yes, I'm going to give you the full right to go rebuild this wall. And he said, I'll do 52 days. I'll finish that wall. Now, if it was anybody else, they would have slept half of that time. They would have slept that night and rebuilt in the day. But this man decided to value his time to say, I'm not going to sleep until this project is completed. Daniel valued his time in fasting. You, Daniel. He, he valued his time in fasting. It took him 21 days for an angel of heaven to come down on earth with his breakthrough. But did you know that nobody told him it's going to take 21 days? Nobody had to prophesy to say, Daniel, 21 days, you'll get your breakthrough. You, you were all blessed here. You'll get a prophetic word on how long to fast. You know when the finish point is. It makes it easy. Even if it's 40 days, you know it's just 40 days. But Daniel fasted until he received his breakthrough. He said, I ain't going to eat until I get my breakthrough. How many of you are willing to have that mentality to say, I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to stop praying until I see at least the substance of what I'm praying for. The evidence of what I'm praying for. The evidence of my faith shall be revealed in this season while I'm praying. Yeah, it's a time. There's a people that are, look, this wall could have been there for generations that no one even wanted to touch. But because you were born, you will be the person to restore this wall that's been destroyed. What does it look like? Now, if you want to have a marriage and keep the marriage, uh, you look back and everybody behind you is divorced in your family. You're going to know that this is going to be a problem. It's going to be challenging, but it's going to hit you and it's going to stop at you. You're going to take a hit, but it's up to you to decide. I'm not going to let it happen in my name. I'm not going to let this thing happen under my rulership. Glory be to Jesus. Yeah, I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. So what you value, what you value will determine how much time it will take to accomplish it. Nehemiah was able to finish something he started. 
Do you know that he was serving as a cupbearer? Then he became, I want to say, a king because he had hundreds and hundreds of people under him that went under his rulership and his command. What do you call that? It's a king. He became a king. But did you know the sacrifice that he did in the presence of the king, Nehemiah? In the presence of a king, he had to sacrifice. Do you know what he had to sacrifice? He was a cupbearer. A cupbearer will drink the wine before he gives it to the king. At least the king dies because of the wine. The cupbearer will eat the food before the king eats the food to make sure there is no poison in that food. The Bible says that Nehemiah, the moment he heard that there is the walls that are broken, the Bible says he sat down, he prayed and began to fast. He risked his job. By the way, it was a government job. He risked his job. He started fasting. Stopped eating when his job was to eat. You have to sacrifice something in order to receive that what you're believing God for. You will have to sacrifice. You can't expect that kind of speed and that kind of breakthrough without fasting. I'm going to help somebody here tonight. Now, I believe this message is for a group of people, but not everybody for now. But can I just now touch everyone? Yeah. All of you here have something in common. You all have a burden. All of you. And that burden is either light or it's heavy. The burden some of you carry is too heavy. It's a heavy load and it's hard to even walk. The Bible says, my burden is light. My yoke is easy. My, my burden, God is saying, my burden is light. But other people, they don't have his burden. They, you have your own burden. You're not carrying his burden. You're carrying your own burden. When you have your own burden, you can't even move. And if you move, you're moving slow. But when you have his burden... It's light, you can move. The word burden is broken down in two ways, in the Greek and in the Hebrew. In the Greek, it's a heavy load. In the Hebrew, the word means prophecy. Burden means prophecy in the Hebrew language. In the Greeks, they say it's a heavy load. <laughs> so which one is heavy? Which one is light? When you receive a prophecy, it's a load in itself that you have to carry in you. And as you're carrying that prophetic word, that prophetic word will get you to the place where you need to be. Oh, I hope I'm helping somebody here. Some of you are carrying a burden. You woke up with a burden to say, man, I can't sleep. Why? Because I have too many people in my family that are broke. I'm going to be the millionaire of the house. I'm going to wake up. That's my burden. I'm going to pay off the debts of my entire family. Somebody else has a burden in their family. I want to make sure that every person in my family is saved. I can't sleep at night until they're saved. I'm going to be the prayer warrior in my house. Me and my house shall be saved and I shall be the one that prays for my family. Amen. What's your burden? Or are you too distracted with your own burden and your personal needs? I, I need more money. I need more this. I need more that. For what? Self-gain. Ladies and gentlemen, I beg you, leave your burden at the altar and let God give you a new burden. I receive. Let him take that burden. Let him give you a brand new burden. The book of Habakkuk is not a prophetic word that God spoke in his ear. But the whole entire book of Habakkuk is simply a burden that was given to Habakkuk by the Lord. He woke up with a burden. He didn't woke up with a prophetic word. But he woke up with a burden. And an entire book was written about him. What's your burden? What's your burden? The devil's after you. 
And if He can just distract you so that you can have a different heaviness in you, your whole life will be short. It'll go by too quick. But when your burden is His burden and His burden is your burden, things begin to shift. Now, you might be asking, how do you let go of your burden? When you have your own burden and it's not God's burden, you can't wake up in the morning. It's the complete opposite than the burden of prophecy. The burden of prophecy wakes you up at night to pray. Your own burden, you can sleep 12 hours and you still won't want to get up. Because you know that the lifespan that you have won't pay off your debt. So you don't want to wake up. That's a burden of this world. But when you have the burden of God, you wake up, you're I prophesy to myself that I shall be a millionaire in my house. I shall be the one that brings salvation to my house. God is going to use me for that. You begin to see that God has called you in the prophetic. You see yourself as a child of God. You look at the mirror, it won't even matter what's in front of you. You see how God sees you made in His image. You check the tag on your body, it says made in His image, not China. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, neighbor, I'm not Chinese. I am made in the image of Christ. Glory be to Jesus. Mm, it's a message for someone. Am I helping you? Yes, sir. And today I want us to drop our burdens, our heavy loads at the altar. And I want us to take upon the burden of Christ. Well, that burden might be different for everybody. I'll give you an example of what my burden is. Can I tell you? Yeah. I'll give you an example that will be relatable with all of you. You're driving down the street and you're going through Baltimore and you realize, man, there's too much evil here. Why are there too many hom uh, homeless people right here in the corner? It's too cold. You begin to cry. It's a burden. You think of ways to fix homelessness. It's a burden. This is a burden that's related. My burden at the age of 16 years old, I said, God, you're going to use me or you're not going to use me. So I said, I give you 24 hours. I don't know why I pray that, but you know, some prayers are crazy, but they work. Less than 24 hours later, as a matter of fact, less than two hours later, God responded. And I said, God, I want you to use me. And if you use me, I want you to use me by healing the sick. Somebody once asked me, why? Did you have like somebody sick that died in your family? I said, no. <laughs> Did you have a close person that's really, really, really sick? No, I don't. I don't know what made me have this burden. It's, it's for no reason. Tell me one 16-year-old boy that you know or girl that you know that can cry if they see a boy that has deaf ears. It's a burden. It moves you in a different way when you hear that somebody is supposed to walk normally. And they're, I have two legs, I'm supposed, this is normal. But somebody else has to walk on something like a crutch. I don't know if I'm making sense. In my house, I have a lot of these. And I never had to use one. You all will have one too in the name of Jesus. Because you prayed for somebody and they got healed. Bring me that one bring it to me. You, if you don't want it, I'll take it. I'll take all of them home. I'm telling you right here. When you have a burden, it unlocks spiritual gifts in you. There are spiritual... Can I, can I do a little prophetic school for a second? There are spiritual gifts that you are given not because of desire. The Bible says desire spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. But not all gifts are given by only desire. Because everybody would have the gift that they desire. Not all gifts are given through love. Or by love. As a matter of fact, some gifts are given through the Spirit. And other gifts are given by the Spirit. Go back and reread. 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. 
The first two, three gifts that are mentioned are given by the Spirit. The rest of the gifts are given through the Spirit. Can I have two people up here? Two people. Stand here. I got $40. $40, right? I have, I'm God, right? I'm the gift giver, all right? If my gift, $40, is given by me to him, take it. It's given to him direct. But if the gift is given through, that means that it's going from you, and I want you to give it to him. The gift was given through the Spirit. One is given by the Spirit, direct. The other is through the Spirit. Thank you. It, it, it's a, I know you wanted that right there. I know you wanted that. Have a seat. So there's a difference between receiving something by the Spirit and through the Spirit. Some gifts are given directly by God to your spirit. Others are given through another man of God. But can I say something now? There are gifts that are given through love. Through love. There are gifts that are given and they're moved by love. But one of the fastest ways you can receive any spiritual gift. Maybe I should say off the mic so that online people can't hear. It's by anger. Spiritual gifts, they move fast through anger. Yeah, anger. Ah. Ah. It's when you get so mad when you see somebody that's bound with demons. You say, man, I want to be that person. You get so angry in your spirit. That's what I want right there. That's when you receive the spiritual gift you're believing God for. It's not like, yeah, God, give it to me. I'll take it. No. It's the person that's expressive in what they want. And when they're angry to say, that's it. Enough is enough. Nobody in my family is going to be bound with demons anymore. Then you make this prayer. God, give me the gift. And then it just enters you. Just like that. Sorry to say it. Be angry and sin not. Yeah, get angry. Say, God, I need this thing. Some of you, you have kids, children that are suffering with nightmares every night. If you're not angry, you will just give them medicine. And whatever the doctors say, you will do that. But if you're angry, whoo, there's no stopping you. There's no stopping you. God will do anything for his child that's mad that wants something from him. How mad are you going to be? Real mad. You got to be expressive. Did you know God does not respond with words or to your words? He doesn't. He does not respond to your words. God responds to the expression that you have. It's your expression. I don't want to go deeper, but... How, how, how do you express yourself? In Los Angeles, you find people expressing themselves in the best way that they can by showing their talents. They're very expressing in what they want, right? Do you want a relationship with someone that doesn't know how to express themselves? You can't look at your child. <laughs> Say, I love you. <laughs> Give me a hug. That's the wrong expression of telling someone you love them. You change your voice and you tell them you love them in the way you tell them you love them right yeah you got to use your expression when you communicate with god glory be to jesus so mama was preaching <laughs> on uh on sunday and she was expressing the fact that this man was building the the wall 
I began teaching on the power of a burden. When you have a burden in you, something begins to move. The burden in you is what's going to help you finish that what God put in you. If you carry a burden, if you have a burden in you from God, you won't sleep until it's done. You know, Prophet Passion sleeps only three, four hours per night. It's very hard for me. It's hard to serve because he doesn't sleep. That means if he doesn't sleep, you can't sleep, especially when you serve. The burden in him says, if I sleep, I won't get this building. Let me fight to get this church because this is the vision, the burden God gave me. And whenever you have a burden, there is an entire book, I believe it's Nehemiah chapter number five, an entire um, chapter that lists off the names of everybody that partnered with Nehemiah's vision and burden. Amen. Nehemiah had a burden. Everybody began to partner. Everybody began to support the burden. Why is nobody supporting me? Begin to go back to the burden that God put in you. Go back to the prophetic word that you received and begin to build that word that you got. Amen. 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 When you carry a burden, it gives you wisdom from heaven. Because when Nehemiah had a burden, there is a situation that happened. A prophet was sent to Nehemiah to disturb and di to distract him. He was a paid man to give a prophetic word from God to get him to stop building the wall. But the Bible says Nehemiah looked at him and he perceived it was not God speaking. So he sent him away and didn't even respond. He said, talk to the hand and kept going. Yeah. Nehemiah hit the block button. Yeah. Not for the prophet, but for himself. Yeah. You go on your Instagram, your Facebook, you got to block somebody. Yeah. You don't block them for them, you block them for you. Yeah. Because you know yourself, they're going to distract me in the vision that God has for me. Yeah. Let me block them for me. This is called a guardrail. It's called a wall. Many people, they take the guardrail and they throw it in the ditch and expect to overcome temptation. You can't put the guardrail in the bathroom. If you have problems with uh, pornography and masturbation. I'm helping somebody. You can't put the guardrail in the bathroom. You put the guardrail on your phone. You put the guardrail on your time. Your time management. Can I talk about time now? Yeah. Woo, we're going somewhere. Time. What you pay for, you value. What you got for free, you don't really value. Yep. It's a fact. What you pay for, you value. And what... You value, you keep. All right. Back in the day, a long time ago, there were these phones you would buy. And when you buy this phone, you have to add something called minutes. How many of you had that kind of phone? You bought minutes. And you'd buy 60 minutes or 50 minutes or 20 minutes. Or let's say you bought one hour of, uh, of talk time. 60 minutes. Do you know how much those minutes meant to you? Every minute of every conversation mattered. Every time someone called you, you would be like, I don't know this number, block, delete, I'm not answering you. If it's my boyfriend, we're good. But if it's like my mom, it's going to be a few minutes and I'm done. I have too many minutes that I'm about to lose here. You know, she talks too much, you're going to like, you know. Why? Because you bought those minutes. All those minutes, you, now you have an unlimited plan. That's why you don't value relationships as much. You just pay one price and you can talk as long as you want. When was the last time you had a conversation with your mom now? With your boyfriend. But the minutes you used to purchase made you value the communication you had with one person. 
Certain people you wouldn't even talk to, you wouldn't even answer, but other people you would make sure that those few minutes, hey, listen, I don't have much talk time right now. I only have a few minutes left, but let me tell you this, bum, 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 done. Three points, you're done. You took notes before you even called someone. That's how you valued time. What if we had a certain type of payment where we can give it to God and every minute we spent in prayer meant something to us and God? Sometimes the reason why you don't value time is because you don't pay for the time. Once you have a revelation that you're on borrowed time, you won't sleep long. Glory be to Jesus. Whose time are you living and who are you living for? Block someone. Don't let them waste your time. How do you value your time? Mm. Let me tell you something. Why is it that some people, they pray, nothing happens? They pray six hours, ten hours a day, nothing. Another person comes here, a mother that comes here on the altar, she prays for two seconds. A whole thing about her life is revealed. God answers all of her prayers. All of her debts get canceled all in one single minute. How? Because one, how they pray, they value the time they're praying. It's not about spending the time in prayer, but it's about the value you have per minute in prayer. How do you express your thoughts? How do you express yourself to God every time you pray? Can I talk to the single mothers in here? Some of you, you have two, three jobs and you're working as hard as you can because you have two, three kids. You have to pray as, um, sorry, work as much as you possibly can to make sure ends meet. The moment you get into prayer, that time that you have to pray is only 30 minutes because you have to go to work in four or five hours. So God sees your prayers and He values your prayers more than He does someone lazy at home. Go to the altar, pray. The only time a single mother is able to pray is when she gets home. Just for a couple of minutes, God sees your time, you prayer warrior. God sees every minute and He values that prayer. Amen. It's because you don't have time to pray, you valued it and it means more to God. Amen. God shall bless the work of your hands. Put your hands together. Amen. Like this. Go like this. This is God blessing the work of your hands. Amen. When you put your hands together to pray, He blesses those hands. It's not at the work field that he blesses the work of your hands. He blesses the work of your hands in the prayer room. Hey. God shall bless the work of your hands. Yeah. My title is Maintaining My Blessings. How do you maintain your blessing? Remember, the apostle spoke, I'm coming out. The prophet spoke on identity, finding out who you are. Now I'm saying to you what? Maintain your blessing. You maintain it. What you maintain, you value. Mm. If you don't maintain your car, you don't care about your car because you got it for free. Yeah. If you manage, if you maintain your car, it means you like and value that car. You're going to make sure that you change the oil every three to 10,000 miles. But if you don't care... You, there's no value to the car to you. You don't care if it breaks down. So when you maintain the blessing that God has given you, that means that you value what God has given you. Yeah. So how do you value your prayer? How do you value your prayer? You value your prayer by maintaining it. If you're that single mother that prays that one hour at the end of the day because it's the last time of the day that you have, that 30 minutes in the morning just to wake up to pray, you are actually maintaining the blessing that God has given you. Amen. And that what you maintain, you keep. Amen. So whenever you don't maintain your burden, the burden disappears and you come back again to the same cycle of having your own burden. Can you come? My yoke is easy, my burden is light. A yoke is something that is yoked upon one and another. It's around the neck of the animal, right? 
It says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. But when you don't have his yoke, you are yoked to the heaviness, the depression, the same cycle over and over. You're going through the same thing over and over and over again. This is what it looks like when you are in a yoke of depression, a yoke of your own burden. Don't move. I'm the one moving. I'm you. And I'm trying to walk, but I can't. You can move a little bit. No, no, no. Just don't move. Just stay in one place. What's with me, man? <laughs> Relax. I'm moving, but th that which I'm yoked to can't move. So that's why you're going in circles in your life. It's one person's moving, the other one's standing still. That's why it says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. If you're with and equally yoked with him, you will both walk together and you will move forward in life. Thank you. Why are you walking in circles? There's too many cycles in your life. It's because you're in your own world. You're in your own burden. But when you carry the burden of Christ, you will move straight. You will move forward with speed. And I pray that any person that's dealing with these cycles, they will come to an end in the name of Jesus. Amen. Any person dealing with continuous cycles, I decree and I declare those burdens be removed off of your life. Father, I pray your people that are struggling to pray, but they're maintaining their prayer life. I decree and I declare, oh God, nothing shall distract them from praying. Nothing will steal their blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Your blessing shall rain upon them. Whatever they're believing you for, oh God, if it's simply a relationship with you, let them have it in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray a blessing over their life. I pray your miracles, signs, and wonders would follow them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. What is your burden? This week, I want you to write down what is the burden that God gave you. You can't keep your eyes on a burden, on Christ's burden, sorry, if your eyes are on your own. You can't. So if I can just get you to sit down one of the days this week, and begin to take your eyes off of your own problems and your own burdens. And begin to say, God, what is your burden? His burden is easy. God has a burden. It's a heavy load. He has something in his heart. And when he gives it to you, woo, you'll cry for no reason. You'll just weep for no reason. those burdens now that you carry they begin to grow so deep they root themselves so deep in your heart that God before he gives you a burden he has to remove your old ones God will never pile a burden on top of you if God gives you a burden right now when you yourself are already stuck in your own burdens you will break you'll break down it's too heavy but if he can remove your burden today and give you a new burden, ah, it'll be refreshing. You'll want to not sleep in. You have a different desire to life. So how do you get rid of a burden? How do you let it go? Is you get into a place of worship. Worship. When you go pray and when you worship, how many of you ever heard the saying, soaking in His presence? You soak in His presence, not even any uh, loud or praise. There's praise and there's worship, right? When you worship Him, the soaking begins to take place. Why do we say soaking in His presence? Remember your heart and, your heart and you yourself are made out of the dust of the ground. It's ground that you are made of. And ground, it automatically produces weeds and there's no seeds for weeds to grow no one plants a seed in your garden uh, no one plants a seed of a weed in your garden right so how do you remove unwanted thorns and see uh, weeds and things that choke the things that you're trying to grow you can't just go there and remove a tree it'll break everything that's connected to it as far as its roots and its stems You have to first get the ground wet. 
you soak the ground then God can begin to pull things out that don't need to be there he pulls them out but you first have to take the first step God will never hurt you he is not the type of God to force himself on you to take out what he needs to take out you have to get into a place of worship and when you get into that place he removes the things that hurt you when you were five years old he pulls it out and what is the effect of that while you're in the worship for no reason whatsoever you begin to weep you can't explain it if you if I ask you why are you crying you will say I don't know it's because God is removing something from your ground that doesn't need to be there I pray right now that God would begin to remove certain things out of your life as you soak in his presence as you're in his place of worship I decree and I declare father touch your people begin to remove certain things in their life every single person that has a heaviness in you God I pray remove it out of their life remove it out of their heart remove it out of their ground begin to touch your people oh God remove that depression remove that suicidal thought remove it oh God remove it oh God remove it oh God remove it oh God in the mighty name of Jesus God I pray Father, I pray, remove the depression, remove that heartache, remove that broken heart in them. Oh God, I pray, whatever the enemy tried to do in evil, my God shall turn it for your good. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, restore their hearts. Restore their hearts. Restore their minds and their souls, oh God. Heal their souls as their soul prospers. I decree and I declare, let your people be free. Let them be free from anything holding them back. Woo! Let them be free from anything holding them back. Let them be free. Tonight is your night. Enough is enough. Father, I pray that any person dealing with suicidal thoughts, let them be removed now and let them be delivered, oh God. Let them be touched, oh God. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Let me remove my my Father, I give my burdens to you, oh God. Any heaviness that I have in me, I give it to you. I don't want this anymore. Father, I release it off of my life. Pray like that. Pray like that. I want you to lift up your hands. Father, the heaviness that's upon any person in this house, it leaves today. Amen. 
any heavy burden that came because of the world I decree and I declare yes. let your people be free right now Amen. let them be free Amen. the burdens that caused them to doubt the burdens that caused them not to want to live yes. the burdens that caused them to turn away from you O oh God and lose faith restore their souls O oh God Restore them, O oh Jesus. Amen. Enough is enough. Give them a new burden, O oh God. For those that are ready, O oh God, drop it in their spirit even now. Mia Morena. Libron da stika pandalia kaseida. Your tongues will begin to shift and change. That's a sign that God has given you a new burden. Aliango Kangaya Marunda Mundas Tiamataya Libros Kandandi Liamakasande Niamosa Pamba Baba 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 Baye Liba Baba Baba Mama 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 Sondo Libra Kanda Kia Kambo Lada Kaze Kina Morena Masate Mika Bamba Diakando Rabasanda Cry out to Jesus, say, God, give me a new burden. Give me a new burden that will wake me up, that will make me want to pray, that will change my spiritual life. Give me a new burden, oh God. Hey.
Father, I thank you for the fresh desires you have placed in your people. Amen. I thank you for refocusing your people and putting them back on your track. Amen. Thank you for the refreshing spirit Amen. you have allowed us to be a part of. I pray that every person in this place would wake up with a fresh desire Amen. that is not their own but yours. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. amen. Some of you, you have, a, you have children that is your burden. Give them to the Lord. Let that burden be off of your shoulders. Amen. And pray that God would give them a burden. Amen. Who is this? Ushers, can you pick her up? I have a word for you. As you were praying there, as you were weeping, I saw a burden upon somebody called Karen. Karen. Who's Karen? Your hometown. I saw this Karen being like a spiritual mother to you at one point. It's true. Before it's Mama Lily. It's true. It's true. She had a burden, and that burden, she gave it to you. It was to make sure that you would never walk away from the faith that you have. This Karen, you'll have to thank her for the rest of your life. Because she was the stepping stone to get you here in this house. This is the Karen that I'm seeing. This bird... This burden became a generational blessing in you. Who is Camille? Camille, my daughter. Your daughter. It's a generational blessing that's been released. Amen. As you're growing up, I don't know if I can tell you this or how to say this to you, but I saw the anointing of speed coming upon your life. Give God one year. One year. I don't know if you're in a relationship, but I want you to give God one year. Prophesy! Somebody shall prophesy! Give Him one year. And I'm seeing your life beginning to go to a place that will be shocking. I'm seeing cameras in front of you cameras and I saw you teaching people teaching people I saw God beginning to upgrade you I saw your face beginning to spread you're spreading spreading because you gave God your yes God is saying he will make you popular and valuable in the eyes of people prophesy it is eyes in the house Somebody shall prophesy. Prophesy. Uh, bring her up. Prophesy. Jaden, 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 Jaden. This is my friends, but I don't talk. Do you have brothers? I have one brother named Dorian. Dorian. I'm seeing drums. That's Jaden. Jaden plays drums. This is you. Who's Jaden? He's my friend. He He's your friend? Drums. Yes, he plays <laughs> drums. I brought him here one time. You brought him here before? I did. I'm seeing him playing drums. He plays drums and he does um, drum lessons as well. I was going to tell you, have him do drum lessons and quit his job. <laughs> Because I see him going full time into teaching young people, especially it's, kids. Yes, he teaches as well. It's true. He he, yes, it's true. Prophesy. 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 Yes, it's true. Can I prophesy? Prophesy. I'm seeing him beginning to be blessed because of your prayers. Amen. Because yes. of being connected to you, I'm seeing a yes. blessing and blessing Amen. and a blessing. Amen. Glory. I'm also hearing a name like Holmes. That's my grandma's last name, Holmes. Loretta. Loretta! Oh, that's my grandma. 
That's your grandma. Prophesy. Can I prophesy? prophesy? There is a blessing upon Loretta. Amen. A prophetic blessing that I'm seeing upon her life. Amen. This blessing I'm seeing upon her life is transferring to you, going Amen. to you, to your daughter. Amen. Uh, your daughter, that one that I mentioned, yes. I'm seeing her growing up. And the situations that you faced and battled with, yes. she won't have to yes. battle those things. You have defeated those battles. Any generational curse has been broken because of your prayers. Woo! You have prayed and prayed. God is going to use her as he's using you to transform and change people's lives. I see you going on like YouTube and different platforms, live streams and teaching people. It's going to grow big. I want you to write down notes before you do teachings because it's going to blow up. People will be blessed by your teaching. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There is a burden that's in your family. It's going to remain there. It's the burden to be able to say no to people, no to certain things. Your no's are very strong and your daughter shall be a person that says no. She will just say no, and there's no stopping her. It's a burden that was given by God to her. Very strong willed. It's a burden. It's a burden. It's a prophetic blessing upon Loretta Holmes. Loretta is, is a name that I know from Bishop Noel Jones, is his wife, First Lady. And Holmes is the last name of a prophet. And there's a prophetic blessing that Glory. transferred from, from the family to you. Hallelujah. I receive. Yay. I receive. Glory be to Jesus. Glory. That Glory. prophetic blessing that you are carrying, yes. it will never run dry. Amen. Keep Amen. maintaining that blessing Amen. that God gave you. Yes. Maintain yes. it. That what you prayed right here. Your spirit was crying out. God answered your prayers. I see God promoting you from glory to glory to glory. Next year by this time, I'm seeing you being in a place of simply wanting to get married and you'll get married. But that one year, give it to God. I give it to God. But be, be very vigilant because God gave you the anointing of speed. This means that that one year can turn into six months. Six months can be three months. But because you obeyed, my God shall bless you in the name of Jesus. You have to understand when you say yes to a prophetic word, you are breaking generational curses. Because the opposite is true. Disobedience is the same as witchcraft. That means obedience is the key to break witchcraft. So when you say yes to a prophetic word that sounds scary, God will bless you. Amen. Curses shall be broken off of your life. Every generational curse will be broken off of your life when you say yes to a word that God gives you. Amen. Woo. Every person that has generational curses upon their life, it's not prayer that breaks that curse. It's obedience. So if you know you're a person that struggles with those things, generational curses of anti-marriage spirits, generational curses of poverty, you know it follows your life. The only way to break it is obedience. So what do you have to do? You look for a word. And find a way to obey the word. If the word sounds scary, don't be scared. It's a, it's a plan for God to completely transform and change your life. So when you look and seek for a word, you're asking God for an instruction. And when God gives an instruction, that just means you're right around the corner from a generational curse to be broken. Look for an instruction. When you see a prophet, say, prophet, what's the instruction? What do you want me to do? Give me a prophetic instruction. I have to break these things. 
When we say find a prophetic seed of 111, what do you do? Ah, you check your account. I have this, this, and this. It's just an opportunity. It's not a must that you have to do it. It's an opportunity that presents itself for a curse to be broken, for witchcraft to be broken. Obedience. Look at your neighbor. Say, obedience, obedience. Breaks, breaks witchcraft, witchcraft. In, the in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands. You see her life? You see her? You will see her prophesying like crazy. God has chosen you to be a prophetic voice to people in Virginia. Virginia. You live in Virginia. And I also saw God using you and connecting you to people in Baltimore. And I saw relationships that were destroyed to be restored. There was a friend you had. You used to bring her. I met so many people. Which one? <laughs> Forget her name. Kira. Yeah. Kira. Kira. That's we must. Girl. We must pray for her. Yeah. I saw the devil trying to separate you two, two as true. friends. It's true. No apparent reason. It's true. It's Reasons true. Reasons that don't make sense. Yes, it's true. Do you it's believe true. I'm a prophet? I believe you're a prophet. Yeah. Yes, I understand. <laughs> yes. 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 Less than 30 days. Yes. Anything between your relationships with people, including her, Amen. will be broken. Amen. Anything in between it will Amen. be broken. God's going to mend your relationships back together. Lift up your hands. Amen. Father, I pray, release your anointing now. Touch. Touch. Any person that has relationship problems, may God restore your relationships and your family. Amen. May God restore your house. Amen. May God restore the relationship with your children, Amen. with your brothers, with your sisters. Amen. My God shall restore your relationships in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can I prophesy? Prophesy. 30 days you shall testify. Relationships restored. I receive. Even with your boss, it'll be restored. In the name of Jesus. Women of God, uh, uh, how are you? No, 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 stand, stand, stand. Can I prophesy? Prophesy. Prophesy. Are you good with children? Thank you. Who said yes? Do you know her? Oh, you're prophesying. Are you good with children? Everyone's prophesying yes, but you're saying no. Come. Professor. Do you come to this church? Yes. Yes. You see the prophetess? Yes. You have to serve in this house. Prophesy. Prophesy. You have to. You must. Because your prayers requires serving in the house of God. Your breakthroughs, they require serving in the house of God. Amen. I apply that you call me here. You apply. I apply and they do interview for me. But since they say they call me back, if I'm fit, that they don't call me here. You're going to speak to her directly. Amen. God sent me here to tell you that the doors have been opened to serve. It's been the biggest cry of your heart. I want to serve. And that door is opening. And once it opens, I'm telling you, you'll see her testifying on the stage. I want you to find a way to serve in the children's department. Children's department. Because I see you raising the children there, teaching them. You're not going to be necessarily the leader of the children's department right away. But just start serving there as someone that's just helping. Yes. God is going to use you mightily to help and have children remember you as their Sunday school teacher. How many of you here remember your Sunday school teacher when you were like 5, 10 years old? Look at the hands. You will never forget that teacher, right? Never. The God is saying you will never be forgotten. 
even as the young and the older had raised their hands because of a Sunday school teacher. Sunday school teachers have the most value in the house of God because they change the course of a child's mind towards God. You have to make time to serve in the children's department. There's a blessing pending. I'm telling you. Are you married? Not yet. Somebody shout prophesy. Prophesy. Do you have a boyfriend? No. Not yet. Not yet. Any man single in the house, raise your hand. I'm going to prophesy. Any single men in the house. I'm going to pray for any man that's single. Daniel. Oh. Professor. Quickly look around before I pray. <laughs> Professor. Uh, God is going to bless you with a marriage. <laughs> the reason why God is putting you in the children's department. Ah. Do you believe I'm a prophet? I believe. Are you sure? I believe. You have never been married. You've never been married. I see a serious issue in your womb. Yeah. Hmm? I have a stomach. I mostly all the time since my child is still stomach pain. Since you were a child yeah. until now. Yeah, it, you it had stomach before, pain. But in, in some couple of years it starts again. The reason why God's putting you in the children's department to serve is because He's breaking barrenness. Hallelujah! You, you don't know this because you're not yet married. But right now you're actually barren. I, ha I had some, some dream, I would say dream, concerning that, and I pray against it. Did you tell anybody? No. Nobody here knows about that. Mm -mm. Professor! Right now, I'm going to pray for you. Barrenness and stomach issues will be healed. Amen. Start serving in the children's department. God will bless you with many children. Amen. They will be smooth, if you know what I'm saying. Amen. Can I get some oil? Lift up your hands. My mother had 16 children. You're not going to have 16, don't worry. But there is an anointing that she believed God for. And that anointing she believed God for was giving birth with no pain. And she received it. No epidural. 16 kids. She said, why should I be under the curse of Adam? There shall be increase of birth pains. She said, I rebuke those birth pains. I will never have birth pains. One, two, three. I'm number 10. Glory. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. All barrenness is being broken right now. As she gave your yes, her yes. As she gave you her yes, I decree and I declare, barrenness be broken. Touch. Touch. Be healed. Stomach pain, get out. Once and for all. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. It is done. Somebody shout it is done. It is done. Any person that has issues in their stomach, lift your hand. Lift your hand. If it's digestive, if it's as a matter of fact, somebody has like really, uh, is actually in the middle of a stomach infection. There's not really any pain, but it's like when you go to the bathroom, it's bright green. It's you. Come. Professor, somebody shall prophesy in the house. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Any infection in the stomach, any issues in the bowels, I decree and I declare. Be healed. Enough is enough. 
be healed. Touch. Yes, sir, come. Prophesy. Prophesy. Just a question. Where is your mother? My birth mother has passed. She passed. Mm -hmm. Was the passing away tragic? Cancer. Can I tell you something? Sure. Prophesy. When I saw you standing there, I saw tears on your face. Mm -hmm. When you raise your hand about the stomach, mm -hmm. the Lord said it has a tie to the mother. Mm -hmm. Prophesy. The day she passed mm -hmm. is the day stomach turned upside down. Yes. And it caused you to be almost like allergic to certain things. Yes. You can't eat like certain foods. Yes. I don't know if it's peanut butter, bread, or what. But your body doesn't react well with those things. Yes, yes. Peanuts and all those other things. Are you Prophesy. allergic to any of those things? Like Not that I know of, but I have problems digesting things at times, yes. This has to do with the time of your mother right. passing. My mother passed when I was about nine years old, but it was the most devastating thing that ever happened to me. Your stomach turned. Yes, and I had stomach problems ever since then. Amen. Prophesy. 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 2018, there's a service here we had. You remember? Some of you, are, you remember? There was a man that I prophesied to word for word, same thing. And I said, go to Walmart and buy bread, peanut butter, anything you couldn't eat, apples, anything. Eat all of it. Prophesy. Remember, it. <laughs> he was allergic to almost everything. Eggs, you name it, Prophesy. he's allergic. Because the day his mother passed, everything twisted. Yes. He yes, became yes. allergic. He couldn't use the bathroom normally. Yes. So he went to Walmart. He filled his shopping cart full of groceries that he couldn't eat. He began eating everything after service that he Prophesy. couldn't eat. Prophesy. I receive it. Prophesy. He said, if I eat any of these things, I'll end up in the hospital. That's how severe it was. Prophesy. Then what happened? He ate everything. He was normal. One day, two days, seven days normal. Amen, amen, amen. Prophesy. The next week he came to church. He testified. He comes here every now and then. You know, he, he comes here every now and then. Prophesy. Fully healed. Hey, I receive it. I Do you believe that God can heal you oh, right absolutely. now? Absolutely. Absolutely. Glory. Stomach issues. Yes, I Anyone that raised your hand, may God heal you in the name of I Jesus. Amen. Now he's gaining weight. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Stomach be healed. Be healed. Hey! I'm seeing a generational blessing of men of God in your house. Generational blessing. Some took on the assignment and others left it alone. Uh, it's like I'm seeing your father or something. Yes. Is he like a pastor or something? He's not. Because I'm seeing a pastoral blessing and a, a like a very anointing. I don't know how to explain it, but it's like a big anointing upon his life. Yes. I saw it over his head. Prophesy. I saw it over his head over and over, and it's never like coming to his spirit. And it's like God got tired. That's what it seemed like. Then I saw the blessing come into your life. Amen. Amen. So I'm seeing you holding a double anointing. I receive. A prophetic anointing I receive. and a pastoral anointing. Mm. The prophetic anointing and gifts that I'm seeing came from this house. That pastoral anointing, I saw it coming from your father's side. It's true. And there's a, a very strong love that you will portray to the people when God releases you. Amen. Pastors, they're able to connect with people and love them through their situation. Amen. 
you will help pa pastor people Amen. and you're also going to help prophesy to people out of their situations Amen. you'll give them words that shall pierce and that will remove things out of their life Amen. because you're serving in this house my God is going to turn things around for your good yeah. as I was prophesying marriage to her I'm prophesying marriage to you I decree and I declare father release the anointing upon her life for the pastoral and the prophetic and may God bring marriage to your life in the name of Jesus anything blocking you from receiving your partner may God bless you in Jesus name somebody shout hallelujah Be healed. Amen. Amen. It's enough. Jesus. Jesus. Enough is enough. But I thank you for your angels. Labronda Stein Vaden Sikapanda Lididididididiando Sai Lididididiando Sakapanda Laden Vaden Sando Librando Skiba Baba 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 Sodo Lidana Masada Laba Baba 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 Baye Sadabaya Sadabaya in the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare, complete his healing, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, enough is enough. You will no longer have to carry that cane. In the name of Jesus, begin to walk in the name of Jesus. Begin walking, begin walking. Lidiamos, tabadeamando. digestive issues not being able to eat certain things bowels are being healed intestines are being healed stomach is being healed if you go to the doctor they'll say your lining is messed up and your stomach is having some issues that can't be restored but my God is saying what man deem impossible it's possible for God Lift your hands. Be healed. Touch. Stomach be healed. The lining be healed. Bowels be healed. In the name of Jesus. Take a deep breath. Say, I am healed. Everybody lift up your hands. 
Some of you, you have a burden to heal the sick. You have a burden just to pray for people, to prophesy to them. I want you to connect in this atmosphere. Find a prophetic seed and say, Jesus, I connect with a prophetic offering. Offerings, they begin to bring down the presence of God in different areas. The Bible says that Solomon went to the temple. He gave an offering of a thousand cattle. And the Bible says that God came to Solomon that same night and says, Solomon, Solomon, what do you want? I'll give it to you. It was an offering that caused God to come down to Solomon. I want you to find a prophetic offering right now. Let it be a thousand if you can do a thousand. Connect to the off with an offering. If you're giving a thousand, I want you to come up this side right here. But if you're giving an offering that's in your heart, if it's like 111, 222, 333, 77, find an offering and connect in this atmosphere. And I want you to say, God, my burden is this, this, and this. And begin to cry out for God to use you. Cry out for God to use you. Take your offering, come up. anointing in this house what you just sowed for has been answered Amen. what you just sowed for has been answered thank you Jesus so God, thank you Jesus prophesy as I was holding that baby Professor. It was a prophetic, prophetic hold that I was doing there. I see you holding a baby. Amen. I'm seeing a boy. Amen. And I'm seeing someone called Isaiah. Isaiah. Prophesy. You will carry a boy called Prophesy. Isaiah. Prophesy. It is done, says the Spirit of the Living God. Amen. Amen. Come. Amen. Prophesy. 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 Prophesy, Apostle. 
Can I prophesy or should we go prophesy. home? Prophesy! 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 You've been asking God how long, how long, how long? Amen. Prophesy. And there's two things you're asking God for. Prophesy, Apostle. With how long? Amen. It's time. How long are we going to be here? Amen. Prophesy. And how long is it going to be that I have to wait until I have a baby? Prophesy. Two things. Amen. I saw you being tested. God, Prophes God tested you. And I saw God testing the man of God. Amen. Prophesy. I saw him passing tests and passing tests and passing tests. I saw you passing tests. Prophesy. The last few months that you've been serving here, both of you, it's been a season of tests. It's true. You almost walked away. You actually walked away. You came back. Amen. In your heart. You left. You came back. Amen. You Prophesy. pushed through certain rumors and certain things. Prophesy. Which I don't know about, but I'm prophesying. Prophesy, apostle. This is why I don't get into church politics. Amen. But what I'm saying is your faithfulness being remembered by God. Amen. Prophesy. If all goes well. Amen. I see you just staying here for one more short year. Prophesy, apostle. Huh? He said it's true. One true, more true. short year. Prophesy. And I see God releasing you Amen. with Prophesy. the whole family. Prophesy. And I saw you blowing up. Amen. But it takes you that one small year of going through what you're going through. Amen. Just one more. We, we signed the lease for another year. You just signed just the lease signed for, lease for, for a, a year. A year. Yeah. <laughs> just one more year. Prophesy. I see you being released. Amen. And I see you having your ministry. Amen. And I see you growing and growing and helping people and accepting them. God is going to give you the grace to be able to house people. Wow. Amen. Prophesy. It's not one house. But you're going to house people. Amen. Prophesy. Prophesy. You'll gather and start with home groups. Amen. Prayers. Uh, prayers. Bible studies. Getting them together. I'm seeing the young people having a, a hunger for God again. Amen. Prophesy. But it's going to take a year of serving. A year of Putting down your desires for his desires. Prophesy. Amen. Prophesy. Just keep pushing. Keep serving. Yes. Amen. This is what the Bible says about Nehemiah. While they were building the wall, they were almost done. They were at the very end of building the wall. Amen. The Bible says that enemies tried to come and distract them. Yes. So one hand was building the wall and another hand was holding a weapon. Yes. Amen. So one is defending and one is building. Prophesy. Don't let anybody come at you and destroy your assignment Amen. in this last year. Amen. Prophesy. Be very careful how you serve and when you say things and when you do things. Amen. Very careful. Prophesy. Yes. Prophesy. 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 It's true, Apostle. It's true. Prophesy, go deeper. Prophesy. Go deeper. Yeah. The prophetic apostle. <laughs> go deeper. Help us, sir. Help. And that's his bless. <laughs> Prophesy, apostle. I'm seeing some things now. All right. Help us, sir. Unfolding. But uh, you've passed a lot of tests. Prophesy, Apostle. But you also failed a lot of tests. Yes. Uh, yes. yes. A lot. <laughs> That's true. But because of the failures of your past, Amen. it caused a prophetic blessing to be mm. deposited in you. Amen. It's going to begin to come out of you eventually. Prophesy. And the prophetic will be able to flow like you have never seen, especially Amen. you. I I see you prophesying online. I see you prophesying to people. Just one more year. Just wait. You'll see God begin to move you and begin to use you like never before. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. May God give you the wisdom and the revelation on how to serve. Amen. And how to complete this last year of serving so that he may release you. I decree and I declare may God do it for you in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 
Are you all blessed? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Uh. Prophesy. Prophesy. Are you married? Are you married? The white. Are you married? You. It's like the single row or what? <laughs> it's true though, right? Hey, is the whole row single? Except for one. Yay. Prophesy. Prophesy. The land of Atlanta. Prophesy. Prophesy. May you get married in the name of Jesus. I receive. And may you have a happy marriage. I receive. That will not end in divorce. I receive. May God give you a lover. I receive. That will lead you to the place you need to go. I receive. In Jesus' name. Amen. Ah. Hey. It's about to be a lot of weddings here. Amen. In Atlanta, we have services on Tuesdays where we call them document service. And I pray for people that they bring their documents and they believe that God can do something for them because there's no other way. Bring it there. You, you, there's no other way for a miracle to happen except that God responds to your situation. There is a family that came and they had a lot of debts. They put it on the altar. They've attached the seed to their debts. They put it down. I laid my hands. Actually, I took all the documents home. Put them on my altar where I prayed. And I said, God, answer all of these people. All of them. Y'all want to do a document service? Yeah. I wanted to do something. Next week, Thursday. Bring your documents. I don't know who's preaching, but just bring your documents. Because it's the same altar. A lady came. She connected $100, I believe it was, or one something. To her debt bills that she brought. $25,000 of debt completely canceled. Somebody else came. Saw the testimony. They brought their debts. He said he gave $6. Put it on the altar. He prayed. He said if God can do it for her, he can do it for me. Do you know how much his debt was canceled? $24,900. In the same service, $50,000 total debt canceled by two people only. Another lady, she went, she gave $5,000 canceled. Grace. Any person that has debt in this house. Do you want to testify next? Yes. Do you know how easy it is for God to cancel debts? Just a simple mistake in the mortgage company that just says your house was paid in full by accident. I don't know who did it. House paid in full. Who paid it? I don't know. Someone did a typo. May there be a typo under your name. I receive. Your house shall be free. I receive. Your car shall have no more payment. I receive. Your phone bill shall be paid off. I receive. In the name of Jesus. Hey. It is done. If you're prophetic, find a seed, attach it to the prayer. Say, I'm done with these debts. I'm sick and tired. I'm going to give. I'm going to give my way out of this. Do you know you can give your way out of uh, poverty? You didn't know. The woman that gave two coins in the Bible. Are you hearing me? The Bible says that she gave out of her poverty. Do you know what this means? Jesus said she gave more than the ones that gave physically more. And the disciples said, how? Jesus responded saying, because she gave out of her poverty. That means that if you take something, two coins... 
She left poverty right there on the altar with her, with the two coins, and she walked away. She gave poverty itself and left it there. You're not getting it. May poverty leave your life in the name of Jesus. I receive. My God will make you rich. I receive. Yeah, He wants you rich. Even if you go to heaven, you will have gold there. Gold, the streets are gold. Our most expensive thing on this earth, gold, is heaven's cheapest. Yay. Think about it. Man is trying to, this man, he took a wheelbarrow, filled it with gold. Somebody asked him, where are you going? He said, I'm on my last days. I'm going to put this gold in my coffin. I'm going to take it to heaven with me. The other man responded saying, man, heaven has enough gravel. They don't need more gravel. You missed it. You missed it. It's heaven's gravel. Their floors are made out of the things that you value the most. My God can make you rich. Your God will make you rich. Why should you struggle? Hallelujah. Let's stand up on our feet. Debts are just a distraction to make sure you have no faith. Debt has to do with your past. Faith has to do with your future. So debt chokes your faith and brings it to, to the past. So lift your hands. Close your eyes. Father, whatever you have started tonight in their hearts, may not the devil or the enemy take anything that you have started. This service was a very prophetic night, oh God. I pray your people will be blessed from generations to generations to generations because of them being here tonight. Let there be generational blessings released. Amen. Any limitation you are faced with, may God open a door for you for that limitation to be broken this week. In the mighty name of Jesus, may you carry a prophetic blessing. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody shout, Amen. Amen. If you brought your tithes, I want you to come forward. I want to pray for you. If you're a tither, come forward. Hey, your future is bright. Very bright. If you're giving online your tithes or your offerings, Kingdom Embassy Inc. on Cash App, paypal.me slash Kingdom Embassy Inc. Zell 301-503-7144. Lift your offering in your right hand. Touch. We exalt, we exalt thee, oh Lord. Oh Lord. We exalt thee. Baba, 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 sonda, liya, mata, daya. Lidada, mandunduro, basanda, liya, makala, la, masata.
exalt thee. We exalt thee. Lord, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're we worthy. We exalt thee. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. We exalt thee, Jesus. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. Yes, we Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. I know we can stay all night and worship. And as I'm going, I want anybody here that just wants just two minutes, three minutes of worship. That's going to be available, right? Right? You're not going anywhere. Two, three minutes. If you want to continue to worship, feel free. I want you just to make this service be a day where you've said, this is my day of receiving that new burden from the Lord. I'm leaving behind my old self, and I'm leaving here a new person. If I had temptations and I've, that I didn't overcome, if I fell into temptation, today's a new day. A new page was started. Amen. And I want you just to worship Him, thank Him. And uh, when you go home, I want you to keep that atmosphere in your house. Amen. Were you blessed tonight? Are you sure? Are you sure? All right. God bless you. We'll see you next week.